Hello, today I'm going to show you how to make a simple clicker game on Scratch. If you didn't know, a clicker game is essentially where you have your mouse and your mouse is clicking an object. When you click that object, you obtain points. There's an upgrade shop, when so you can use points to buy upgrades. Say one upgrade would be like, uh, every click actually gives you five points now. And the object of the game is just to get as many points as possible. We're going to make a very simplified version of the game. So let's get started. Here I've named my new project Cake Clicker. And I have these two basic sprites. I have imported this mouse separately. It is not a scratch. Or this cursor separately. It is not a scratch sprite that you can just get from their database. But this cake is. You can just go in here. Search up cake. And there it is. We go into, If we go into the costumes folder of this cake. We can see that there is an unlit cake and a lit cake. Uh, so it should be uh, like this, where the lit cake is first and the unlit cake is second if you've just imported your cake. But I've moved it so that the unlit cake is first. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna have it first unlit and when it is clicked, it's gonna go into the lit uh, costume it has. So, just to verify that it starts as an unlit cake, we can just say one flag click, so when the program starts, we can say, switch costume to cake underscore B, which is now our first one, it's called cake B. Great, now let's start things off with our cursor. So, what I want our cursor to do is follow our mouse wherever it goes. Um, so, it kind of amplifies our mouse so we can see it, and it looks much nicer. So, we can... Once again, have a one flag click. This time I'm in the cursor's code. And I'm going to drag in a forever loop. So this will run forever while our program is running. So inside, let's go to motion. And we're going to get the set X and set Y blocks. So basically what these do is they set their X to something and set the Y to something. So if I wanted to set the X to negative 200 and the Y to 8, we can see it moves to the left. Because it's just like coordinates in normal math. Um, so let's set it back to negative 100. And so what do we want it to set it to? Well, we want it to be equal to our mouse's coordinates, wherever our mouse is. And we can do that by going to sensing and getting these mouse X and mouse Y blocks. These essentially are variables that always hold our mouse X and mouse Y, so where our mouse is at any given time. So we just want to set their X to our mouse X and mouse Y, so that the cursor will always be at our mouse. Let's see, now we can move it around. So a bit of a problem here. When we hover over it, we can see that this is actually a transparent object I've imported. And if you have that problem too, it can be simply fixed. Just go into the costumes folder. Click the fill icon or the bucket tool and just set your color to white and fill with white. So now, as you can see, it uh, hovers over the quake quite nicely. The cake you can see is not exactly centered. So let's just get a go to block and we can say zero, zero. So there we go. It's centered. Our mouse works. But now we need some clicking. So the way our clicking is going to work is our mouse is actually on top of our cursor icon. So we're not going to detect if our mouse hits the cake. We're actually going to detect if our mouse hits the cursor and if our cursor is touching the cake. Now that's a bit confusing, but that's what we need to do if we want this little cursor icon, which quite frankly, I do. it. I think it looks really good. So to do that, all we need to do is events and we say when this sprite clicked i'm still in the cursors code so whenever this sprite is clicked what do we want to do well we're going to have an if statement if and only if we are touching the cake right so this is basically right now we're adding code to add points so if I click the sprite, and if the sprite is touching the cake like this, then we're going to do something. But if I click the sprite and it's not touching the cake like over here, it's not going to do anything. Or if I'm touching the cake, but it's not, I'm not clicking, not going to do anything. 
So only if I'm clicking and I'm touching the cake. What do we want to do? First of all, let's create a variable. And we can just call this points. And let's make it a global sprite for all sprites. So points. As we can see, points is displayed. So let's change points by one. So if we run, we can see it's changing points by one. There we go. But that's not all. We can do a bit better. We can remember how I said when it's clicked, we want, oops, we want our cake to turn to a lit uh, costume. Well, let's do that. So going into our cursor's code, we can get the broadcast message option. So we're going to broadcast message. And our message is going to be called clicked, all caps. So we're going to broadcast that message. So let's go to cake. And we're going to say, when I receive clicked. So right now, what click does is basically when we are clicking and the cursor is touching the cake, so basically when we're clicking the cake, then we're going to broadcast the clicked. So when I receive clicked, this is in the cakes code, we're going to go to looks. And we're going to switch costume, first of all, to cake underscore A. So as we can see, when we click, it switches to cake underscore A. But we won't, don't want to keep it like that. After you're done clicking, it has to go back to cake underscore B. Or cake hyphen B, sorry. So let's say we can wait 0 0.1 seconds. Just the smallest fraction of a second. And then, unfortunately, we have to switch back to cake underscore B. So let's take a look at how this looks. As we can see, it doesn't stay like that, but I'm clicking as fast as I can right now, and it's kind of staying off. You can see it's kind of changing. When I let go, there we go. It's not lit. Okay. Another thing you might notice is when I stop and I'm running in, points is still 74, but I'm starting a new game. So we need to fix that. We can go to either one of these sprites. It doesn't matter. I'll go to cake and just go to variables and then drag the set variable block and just say one flag clicked set points to zero. So now when I click the flag, points is now zero. Great, so we're basically almost done with our clicker game. Just one final thing I want to do. Let's make our cake maybe a tad bit bigger. Uh, let's set it size to 120. There we go, that's a nice size. So when we receive click, let's actually make it shrink down to give it that click effect. So we can set its size to 100%. So when we set it to 100%, it means it's at 100% of its size. So it's actual true size. If we say like 70%, it means it's being shrunk down to 70% of its size. So when we apply this code, when it's clicked, it's now down to 70%. Maybe 70% is too small. We can do 80 and then after 0 0.1 seconds, we can set it back to 100%. So not only is the costume switching from lit uh, to unlit, from unlit to lit, uh, but the size is also switching. And of course, we need a at one flag clicked. We do need to set size to 100% so that we're all reset. So now here we have it. It's shrinking down as well, and it gives a nice clicking effect. And that's really cool. Whenever we click, if I'm clicking outside here, not working, I'm just hovering over. It's not adding points. I'm just holding. It's not adding points. So our game is beautiful and foolproof. Um, and that's about all there is to it. This is the basics of a clicker game. But this can be expanded so much further. You can add sound effects. You can add a shop where you can buy upgrades so that your clicks are worth more. This is only the beginning of amazing games I'm sure you guys can create.